What's up everybody, Sam Smice here. Today I wanna show you how to make the Kim Possible ringtone. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first thing is to understand how ringtones are made. And ringtones and like the keys on a keyboard in the United States and other countries are usually made up of a combination of different pure sine wave tones at specific frequencies. Here's just like a Wikipedia page that I typed in like ringing tone and it tells you the frequencies of a different uh, ringing tones in different countries. So here is one for the UK. Here is one for North America, which you might recognize. And here it says that signal is composed of the frequencies 440 and 480. So what you do is you just combine these two sine waves and then you get that sound. And the notes on a keyboard are called the dual tone multi-frequency signaling which means that each of these notes on a keyboard, so here's a keyboard, or not, our keypad, are made up of a few different sine wave tones, and you can look up these frequencies. For example, number one is made up of a sine wave tone at 697 and 1209. So notice these aren't like specific notes, like if you look at a scale, they aren't like specific notes. So they're not like within any type of scale really. Uh, so this is just uh, taking all this into account. This is the first thing that I looked up when I wanted to create this or recreate the Kim Possible ringtone. And now knowing that a ringtone is going to be made up of a few different sine wave tones, two sine wave tones, maybe more, then I need to look at the sample. Here is the ringtone from Kim Possible. And we can see that there are these notes that are bigger, and then we have the third note here is a different tone. Uh, but these three, this one, two, and three are all the same tone. And you have these more quieter tones in the middle. Uh, so I know that these loud tones I want to try to replicate. And then I can try to figure out what this tone is uh, later. So let's go and just check out the first tone. I isolated each of those notes. So I can look at them up in a spectrum analyzer. I'm just gonna use span, which is a free one. You can check this one out and I'll play it and I'm gonna press hold to see what that first note is. And I have this zoomed in, zoomed out, it looks something like that. So I'm gonna zoom in and there's all these points. These main points are mainly what I'm after. And I'm going to look at these main points, which the first one is gonna be at, and if you look up here, you can see what, what note it's saying it is. This one says D8, but the point is not exactly on D8. Like if I zoom in even a bit more, it's a bit off like 17 cents or so. I can look at that or I can look at the actual Hertz. You can see the Hertz frequency. So the frequency is at about 4.75 Hertz or uh, 4.75 kilohertz. So that is going to be, uh, let's just assume this is gonna be like a D note and then I'll look at this one. This one's gonna be like a G note with the sense a tiny bit off. And then we have this one at a D note, which is gonna be an octave lower. So now luckily these are pretty close to notes on a keyboard. So what I could do is I could just create a sine wave note that is around a D and then offset it, like adding a few cents uh, positive to it just to try to replicate this tone. Now let's listen to the second note and freeze it in my span. And let's zoom out a bit. So this top note looks like to be about an F. This one in the middle is an A sharp, and this one is an F lower. So knowing that these are relatively close to actual notes on a keyboard or, or in a scale, then I can just play these notes on a keyboard and then just tweak the sense a tiny bit uh, to get them to fit. You can do it this way that I'm about to do, or you can actually create sine wave tones that are these specific frequencies. So I could go in and create a tone that is actually this 2.82 kilohertz, and then this one that's like 3.76. So you could actually create sine wave tones with at those exact frequencies. But I'm just gonna create the, this in Serum, because a lot of people probably have Serum. Uh, you can also just use Operator uh, to create this tone. And then this one, this tiny quiet one, let's go ahead and just separate this and listen to this quiet tone. And let, let's zoom out. 
And we see that's like a bunch of different notes. And um, so this one, I'm going to just try to see if I can match this on a keyboard because it has a bunch of different tones. So now let's like listen to the full sample again. I can also hear that this signal is a bit degraded or it sounds like it's down sampled. If you look at the span, you can see that there are uh, more harmonics in each of these notes as well. When I was looking at these uh, notes, you can see that there's just like more harmonic information than the three points that I'm going to recreate. So knowing that, then I know that probably want to add on some saturation to degrade the signal some more if I want to try to replicate this actual sample some more. Uh, this is the sound that I came up with. So because I'm going to use Serum, I have just loaded up a sine wave and I offset this 15 um, cents. And then I just played that lower note because I'm going to be making three different notes because there were like three of those main sine waves. And I have D, D, F back to D. And luckily this ringtone is uh, in time with like 120 BPM. So the original ringtone, I just timed it to 120 BPM and it, it seems to match up. So this first layer sounds like this. And that's just a sine wave tone. And I also have it lowered a bit. So I have this at about negative five for the level. And then this second note, which is kind of like that middle note is going to be G, G, a sharp and G. I have the velocity down a bit and I also have this one like pretty quiet. And the span, let's go and check out the span now. And let me solo these two notes together. So you can see we're getting close to that final sound. And then the top note, which is just going to be an octave higher than that first layer. And so let's just ch check out the serum for this, this middle layer. It's just a sine wave again. I offset this one 16 cents. And then the top layer, I offset by 18 cents. So they're all like a bit detuned, a tiny bit, so that we can get a bit of this dissonance that you might hear in the actual ringtone. And this top layer is going to be, might be a bit piercing. It's a pretty, pretty high up in the frequency range. But it's also the loudest note. So I have this one up all the way as far as the level goes. And then this one, this middle note down a bit. And then this. Uh, lowest note up more and the way that I figured out these levels is I was just looking at the span and adjusting the levels according to the span so that's kind of like what I, I've came up with so far and you can also hear that quiet note in there I played a G note like that and that sounded like the note that it was playing in the original ringtone and that sounded a bit like a sine wave but sine waves, when you like distort them or depending on like the distortion that you use, they become more square wave like. You can see this when you put on any of the distortion modes in Serum, how you have this looking like a sine wave and I turn the drive all the way up and it turns more into a square wave. So for this sound, I um, this one note, this lower note, this really quiet note, I felt like I wanted to use like a square wave offset the fine tuning a tiny bit just to mimic as if this were like a sine wave tone a bit distorted. And then I just added like a band pass filter, a band 24 filter. So that sounds like that. And all together the ringtone sounds like this with all of the layers. And after that, then I wanted to try to match the actual sample of that ringtone. So like I was saying earlier, I wanted to add in some harmonics. Maybe I was gonna like degrade it a bit. So what I figured out is I just added on some saturation and I've got this at like 70% and I'm using the soft sign setting. Let's check out the span. Now let me zoom this out with the saturator on and turn it off. So you can see with the saturator on, more of these frequencies in the top end are being added in. And let's take a look at the sample. Let me put a span on the actual sample. So the sample is kind of cut off at about eight hertz or so. There's some of these top frequencies that I added in, but there's gonna be additional frequencies in the top end that I'm gonna to wanna to cut off so that I can like degrade the quality of this um, sound to make it sound more 
like the actual Kim Possible ringtone sample. So what I decided to do is add in the Redux just so I can get more of that kind of like grittiness. And you can play around with the bits. So if I raise this up, the more degraded it gets though, you can see I'm just adding a lot of this like upper harmonic noise. It's adding some more noise in the middle here, which is kind of what I wanted. But I'm still gonna have to cut off all of this top end noise because I don't want that in order to get it to sound more like the sample. And if you are gonna use an EQ, I recommend using something like the Pro Q3 because I could just use, in order to absolutely cut off that top end, I could just brick wall it like this. And then let's check out the span. You can see it just like completely cuts it off. It does a good job of just like removing all those frequencies. I ended up doing like a 72 uh, slope, which is almost like a brick wall, but allows a bit more of these frequencies down here in the top end, but kind of cuts it off essentially around this eight uh, kilohertz range. Or I guess that's around, let's see, 7.5 kilohertz or so. So anyway, I thought that this was a cool experiment to try to recreate this ringtone sound. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and comment down below. Let me know you liked it. Also, please go ahead and give it a like and also please subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. And if you'd like to check out any of my senior preset packs, head on over to store.sansmyers.com.